When we were younger, we grew up in south of England. You know, we, we spent all of our childhood down there, and then about 10 years ago, we decided to move up here to North Wales. We used to come on holiday here when we were younger, so we decided that this would be as good a place as any to come and live and try and carve out a, a career in mountain biking. I was so stoked on, on moving there because it was just so much freedom, you know? You know, we just had all this space to do what we wanted. You know, it's like a paradise for me and Afi to just cause as much havoc as we wanted, really. You know, where we live and, and around this whole area, it's just crazy how untouched it is. There's so many possibilities, you know, you've got these miles and miles of, of mountains and hillsides and moors and, and valleys and places to explore. And there's no jazz and there's no flashing lights. No one around here really knows much about mountain bikes and racing and, and it doesn't matter to them what's happened at the weekend. It allows us to switch off, which is, you know, it's really important. You can't switch on if you haven't switched off. When you're bouncing between hotels and airports and races, you know, it's all dead hectic and, you know, you get back here and it's just a complete polar opposite, you know. It's, it's relaxed, it's laid back and, you know, it keeps you humble. It reminds you that, you know, that, that you racing isn't the centre of the world and, you know, it gives you a chance to kind of step away from it and, and get back to kind of your roots, if you like. Living here, there's nothing to hide behind, you know. It's, there's nothing here and if you want something, you have to make it yourself. I think my favourite time of day is the morning, you know. I love getting up in the morning and, and I go down to see Angus and he's all stretched and sleepy and we go outside and we normally take a, a big long walk because it's just amazing in the morning around here, you know, it's dead quiet and everything's just waking up. I haven't been in this position for a long time, you know, where I'm just at the end of the race season just riding my bike for fun. You know, normally I have surgery and then the next few months is spent in rehab and I don't touch a mountain bike. And, and it's really weird to be just riding for fun, you know. People say, do you want to go and ride? And I say, yeah, let's go. And it is sick to come from the last World Cup, which I won, and I felt amazing. And, and I'm still riding now, a few months later, and I, and I just feel better and better. I think with Rach, it's all a massive mental game, you know. This year, she won five World Cups. As she gets older, she gets more headstrong. And I think she had to go through those those last few years of, of crashing and they've set her in good stead, you know, she's learned a lot. There's so many riders who are like that and you can tell them till you're blue in the teeth to chill out, it'll come, but they have to figure it out for themselves, you know, and Rachel's was definitely one of those. I think it's safe to say that Afi's favourite thing in the world to do is dig. How I walk the dog and, and have Angus, Afi digs. He wants to build the best stuff that people can ride. And... I like creating things, to be honest. I don't really know what to say about Afi and digging. It's some kind of obsession meets a, a weird, bizarre work ethic. For me and G, riding bikes is all about pushing your limits. The reason we dig and the reason we ride is to see how far we can take those limits. For as long as I can remember, Langano Quarry has been the place where we do that. And now suddenly these guys from Revolution have taken it over and pretty much given us free reign over the quarry to build what we want. It couldn't be any better. G went away to Rampage and was like, I'm worried about leaving you in the quarry because I'll come back and it'll just look like takeoffs everywhere. And I was like, no, it'll never be like that. So I'm away for 10 days, get back and he pretty much came back and it was exactly like that. And I'm driving in there and all I can see is, is these kickers, you know, mounds of dirt everywhere. And he'd just been up there solidly, just working away, just completely losing his mind up there. I just want to create something that challenges me. Athi is completely 100% goal-driven person. He gets this idea in his head, he plans how it's going to be, he decides that end goal and what he has to overcome to get there doesn't matter, it's, it's going to get done. And When it's finally right and it all looks perfect, then you get on your bike and you ride it 
and it's incredible, like, you know, the feeling of hitting those jumps for the first time is just, it's all worth it. We're in Langenog, it's pretty early. It's like 9.30, cold, very cold. Happy's been up here two hours. What did his text say? He texted me like hours before I was awake. That's all it said. Nervous. Dan Atherton's nervous. Got to tackle the quarry that he's been building for months on end today. It's on. Riding with Afi, especially someone like the quarry, is amazing for me because he pushes me so much. Hey, you think the next one's going to be into the forest? Oh, wood, wood forest. They haven't built it for no fucking reason! <laughs> I would like to say we're not going to do it. <laughs> Just do it! <laughs> we'll get down so we can't jump it. <laughs> I can't remember how many times I've, I've been sat in front of a jump having that talk with him as to, to whether it's safe to hit or not. If it's not possible, don't do it. He just pushes and pushes and pushes all the time. I've never, ever been through woods so far. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, it's doable as a one big line. Yeah. Once we get a bit of tweaking, we'll just get over that step up in the midway, that's going to be our bit. It's on there. Happy's just done it. He's completed it. This last year has been so different to normal for us because, you know, we've had an extra teammate who isn't an Atherton and, and that's Mark Beaumont. And, and it has been amazing. I can honestly say it's one of the best things that's ever happened to the team, you know? G's had me there for so long and like had me there to practice with and now all of a sudden he's got he's got Mark there and it's so good for him. When Slugger came on board it was a it was a bit of a breath of fresh air if you like. It was amazing for me to be able to have someone new to ride and train with and, and Slugger's an awesome person, you know, we, we get on really well and he's a good laugh. I'm stoked to have him on board, really. I've probably had one of the funnest years that I've had racing bikes. As long as you're at the quarry. <laughs> I am. How are you I'm nervous. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I haven't rode you any of these jumps, Tom. and they're pretty, yeah. <laughs> pretty <laughs> scary, I reckon. You don't have many days where you're, like, you're scared to go riding, you know? A 
I'm really excited for next year because on the team is um, a new rider called Taylor Vernon. He's a junior kid, you know. I've ridden with him quite a few times at British Nationals this year and he's pretty impressive. He's probably one of the best prospects that, that British Daniel has right now. He's a fast junior and, and I get to try and keep up with him. <laughs> We've signed this new up-and-coming rider from Belgium, Martin Mize. This year at Enduro Races, it was amazing to just to see how motivated and how driven he was everywhere he's pedaling, just throwing his heart and soul into every single race run. Your thoughts on all this madness? Oh, uh, fucking ridiculous. I've got to grow something. Get over these bad boys. <laughs> the whole weekend, we, we knew that the, the goal was to get from the very top of the quarry to the very bottom. You know, this whole line that Afi had built, link everything up perfectly. It's one thing doing one jump here and there, but it's, but it's another thing linking it all together. And the opportunity to do that really only came right at the end of the day, you know, the last day of riding, and sat on top of that hill just with the whole thing below you is just... Yeah, it was incredible. Hey, Bruce. Hey, man. Get in there, boy. <clears throat> to that final stretch just banging his last three jumps and the feeling me and G both had when we finished that last jump was just pretty hard to match. <laughs> that was amazing! That was so good! <laughs> yeah. Holy shit! Good job! Yes Laura! That moment right there oh, was for him definitely what made that whole that so months and months of work paid off straight away, you know, it's worth it. Let's do it again, that was wicked. That was so much fun. The thing that I want to see is, is more people racing and enjoying the sport, and, and if that's something that we can be a part of, then, then that's, that's great, that's, that's exactly what we want.